Now we're asked to graph y equals 2 to the x and y equals 1 half to the x. Okay, well, uh, our table for y equals 2 to the x should be familiar, but I have to say uh, a lot of people were not evaluating this correctly, and we really need to correct this because this is a task that was to have been mastered uh, the first day of class. Okay, and the problem is, and th this is, you know, don't, don't, don't feel any shame in this, except that, you know, you should have mastered it a long time ago, but don't feel any shame in the idea that you, you don't have the laws of exponents matter, mastered. Uh, the SOL apparently doesn't require mastery of the law of exponents, um, and apparently our MTE courses, uh, which have their advantages and disadvantages, just as the SOL system has its advantages and disadvantages, uh, but uh, don't apparently give you any idea of the laws of exponents that can be applied here, okay? So if you come in here without laws of exponents, and I know excellent students who come out of pre-calculus courses or analysis courses uh, not knowing the laws of exponents, uh, including one that's quite close to me and quite bright, should know it. Uh, so there's something wrong with the way those courses are being taught. So you have an excuse for not having understood that when you come in. But the time for excuses is over. You can't not know the laws of exponents and proceed into this chapter on exponential functions. It'll be fatal. So you have to know the laws of exponents. <coughs> and just as illustration, uh, if x equals negative 2, what is 2 to the x? Well, it's 2 to the negative 2. So you would write down not what you think the number ought to be, you write down 2 raised to the negative 2. Now, what does that mean? Well, you should know the law of exponents. It says, well, if you got a negative exponent, you got this reciprocal thing. Now, it's phrased more clearly than that and more unambiguously, uh, and you need to look up the phrasing. You need to review the phrasing. 2 to the negative 2, because of this law, means 1 over 2 squared. <coughs> now, that's not a particularly difficult thing to see and to apply, but you've got to remember it. You've got to know that's what a negative exponent means. Uh, and and uh, again, I, I, I'm uh, a little askance that people come out of even Algebra 1, much less Algebra 2 or pre-calculus courses without knowing this. Now, y'all are just in a pre-calculus course. I don't want you to come out of this pre-calculus course not knowing this. Okay, so that's 1 over 2 squared, and of course that's 1 fourth, so that's why you get 1 fourth here. Okay, and 2 to the negative 1 is 1 over 2 to the 1, that's 1 half. And 2 to the 0 is 1, not 0, because any number to the 0 has to be 1. There are reasons with the consistency of the laws of exponents why that has to be the case but any number to the zero is one, <coughs> including zero. Zero to the zero is one. If it isn't, we can easily derive a contradiction using simple numbers. Okay, and then of course two to the one is two, two to the second is four, you've got that. Uh, and most of you understand this, but uh, you know, a significant minority are having problems with this. Fix that. And also, even if you know it, make sure you understand how that's an application of this law of exponents. Okay, now we go to y equals one-half to the x. What does one-half to the x mean? <coughs> well, we started with the example of one-half squared. Well, you understand that uh, one-half squared means one squared over two squared. If you don't understand that, again, you have to understand that. <coughs> <coughs> it's just very basic algebra, so you really need to review if you don't know this. And of course, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 2, so 1 half squared is 1 fourth. Now, another way that you could get that, you know, go ahead and do a little addendum, or if you want, 1 half squared means 1 half times 1 half. Well, by the law of, you know, by the rule for multiplying fractions, that's 1 times 1 divided by 2 times 2. You multiply the numerators, and I've got a of 2 there, and you multiply the denominators, and you get 1 fourth. So if you don't know it this way, you should know it this way, but you really have to know it both ways. 
because you have to use this as well as this. Okay. Uh, what about one half to the negative two? Well, using what we see up here, that's one over the square of one half, which is one over one fourth, because we know the square now of one half is one fourth. And that's one times four over one, just by the rules for, multiply, or for dividing fractions. One divided by one fourth means one times the reciprocal of one fourth. And that, of course, is four. Now, yeah. that's basic arithmetic. Uh, we, we really need to get any uncertainty about basic arithmetic out of our systems. Okay? So, there it is. Now, we do the graphs. Well, and, and people, you know, at least one student, uh, very quickly uh, got these tables and, you know, I, I, I looked around to see what happened, had this graph, and he just went with his third one. Okay, well, I knew exactly what he meant. I knew he understood it. Uh, and others were getting there, but a lot of people couldn't get the table for one half to the x. <coughs> Make sure we know the arithmetic of fractions, the arithmetic of multiplication, powers, and all that sort of stuff. Okay, if we plot these points, we find very quickly that the graph of 2 to the x, of course we know what that looks like, we've been seeing that a lot, and the graph of 1 half to the x looks like this, doesn't it? Okay. So, I think the problem then asked us to go ahead and invert these graphs. Now, we uh, went through some detail on, on this inversion uh, for the log base 2 of x, although we did it last time. There's at least one person that missed last time, so and I, I thought it was worth repeating anyway. <coughs> now, review the... Uh, videos from last class to see exactly how we get this from this. But we simply reverse coordinates. 1, 2 becomes 2, 1. 1, 2 is here. 2, 1 is here. Um, and I don't know how 2, 1 ended up here. 2, 1 is like out here. You know, 2 is up here. So, I think I kind of, so, you know, these points correspond as inverses, okay? Uh, and we can do the same thing with log base one half of x, and I urge you to do that as an exercise. See how this inverts. Okay, we'll continue to a couple of questions in, involving composites. Actually, there's one more thing I want to mention here. How do these graphs compare? Clearly, this graph, this graph is a reflection through the y-axis of this graph. Okay. Now, that means, okay, if f of x is two to the x, then g of a, and g of x is one half to the x, then f of x equals g of negative x. <coughs> f of x, if, if I have an x out here, f of x is the y value we get here. Now, if I go to negative x, that y value is going to be here. So if this is our f of x function, our f of x is equal to g of negative x. And you need to reflect on that. And I mention this because this is the sort of thing, the test for even and odd functions, uh, test for reflections and so forth in terms of function notation, uh, that people really did poorly on on the last test. Uh, I, I didn't, and when I say people did poorly on, everybody missed it. Nobody did it right. Nobody even tried to apply the test, the algebraic test, when it occurred. Um, and and uh, again, I have to say that I, I, I can't imagine how that could be unless there's just a, a almost universal failure to follow up on what we do in class by doing homework in a timely fashion. You really have to do that. Okay. Um, not, not much more to say about that, but the next thing with some composites, uh, you know, it comes back to maybe uh, a lack of practice with function notation. So we'll kind of address that in a minute uh, and, and also look at how this uh, 
the square root of x and x squared functions um, are inverses.